Open uh, mic night. I haven't done one. This is actually my first time. But I'm always like, wow. Is this an open mic night or a fucking support group? <laughs> Like, you hear about comedians being depressed, but my god, have you guys not heard of hookers, you know what I mean? Like, right. But I do, I do have to give it up to everyone who has the courage to get up here, because it's hard, you know, it's hard to stand up here and talk about how you can't get anyone to want to come anywhere near your pee-pee. <laughs> Not to mention doing that in front of a group of people who came out to eat a burger. They clearly did not know it's an open mic night, but they're like, well, let's just sit down here and it doesn't matter. We can kind of like just watch and it's just not funny and then we're just gonna tune out and then we can like get the fuck out of here. It's hard to do that. It's like hard to talk about yourself in front of a group of people. And I mean, can you imagine like, you're already fucked in the head. You're sitting at home, miserable, on a Friday night, with your pee-pee in your fucking hands, and you have a thought like, hey, let me just bring this scenario to a group of people who have no idea who I am, and they don't give a fuck about me, and I'll tell them about me having my pee-pee in my hand on a Friday night, miserable, and maybe it'll make them laugh, and that will somehow make me feel better about myself. Woo! Like, that's hard, so I really oh, wow. respect it. I really, really do. I respect it, I do. I do, I respect it. I do, so. It's false. I haven't had anyone come near my pee pee. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I can't relate though, you know what I mean? Like, um, come on, I'm a guy, I can relate. I relate like in a different way than like, the people who joke about that though. I relate to it in like the way a minority relates to racism. Like that's my George Floyd. Oh. Like, no, 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 hear me, hear me out, hear me out. Hear me out. First of all, have you noticed the cane? It's not because I'm trying to look like that guy in the fucking can of peanuts, you know what I'm saying? I will tell you that much. Second, have you noticed that I'm basically a midget? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if you're my height, but I gotta break it to you. We're midget height. <laughs> Women, obviously I'm not talking to you here. Women can be like two and a half feet tall and be like, um, you have to be six foot five to ride this ride. <laughs> but yeah, I'm basically a disabled, crippled midget. And you know, my disability isn't the kind where you get sympathy points for it, you know what I mean? Like, there's no sob story for an ugly, crippled midget. No one's looking at an ugly, crippled midget with a spinal disability and going, you are so brave. <laughs> Don't believe me? Have you heard of the Hunchback of Notre Dame? The story? Have you heard of Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame? By the way, uh, show of hands, do any of you recognize me from Tinder? Raise your hand, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, good. I did not want to be exposed tonight for not actually being six foot three. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. No one's swiping right anyway, I promise. But, um, but yeah, there's no sympathy for an ugly, disabled, crippled midget with a cane in a sarcastic attitude. <laughs> and you know what? Growing up, Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame was traumatizing for me. Speaking as an ugly, disabled, crippled midget with a cane from the United States of America, the crown jewel prodigal son of illegal immigrants with a sarcastic but also positive can-do attitude, this needs the Hunchback of Notre Dame was traumatizing for me as a kid. And if you don't know the story, I'll tell you, you basically have this hunchback French guy who is made fun of and treated like crap, he's in Paris, and he's a bell ringer for the church. He has this like bug eye, like, you know, like, oh, like, and he has a shitty fucking haircut. It's really bad. He falls in love with this gypsy bitch. I love how people back shut the fuck up. He, he falls in love with this gypsy bitch named Esmeralda. I'm, I'm fucking you guys, I love you guys. He falls in love with this gypsy bitch named Esmeralda. 
and there's a French captain named Phoebus, who is this tall, white, handsome captain who also falls in love with her too. And let me be clear, this captain is not a freak, he's not inept in any real way. He's a tall, white, handsome man who works for the French nobility. So there's like a, like what we call a, a love triangle. You're familiar with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, Quasimodo the Hunchback rescues Esmeralda from certain death. So because what happened is since she was a gypsy, she was going to be burned to death by the Catholic Church by his head priest. Quasimodo the Hunchback rescues her from being burned to death by like literally like breaking away from some chains. Like he's tied up at the top of the church. This is how much he loves her. And he repels down from the top of the tower all the way to the ground level, swoops up as Moralda. He swoops all the way back up to the top of the church. The church is tall as fuck. And he fights the head priest at the top and he basically kills him and they both fall off the church. And at the end of it, she walks up to Quasimodo the Hunchback. She's clearly super grateful. You know, she has this like sultry look in her eyes. She's like thankful, like her life got saved. She was about to get fucking burned to death. And she gives him a handshake. A handshake? She then goes to Phoebus, the captain, and immediately starts sucking his dick. And I'm talking about sucking that shit, like, blah, blah, blah. Like porn hoops though, just sucking that shit. And that's what I mean, like I relate to the comics here tonight. Get a kudos to you. Thank you everyone. My name is Joy Nick on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Yeah.